And thank you for being with us. Bombshell tonight. 6.30 a.m. Police race to a high-end ski resort to find the Nissan Sentra of 20-year-old Krista Dittmeyer. Engine running, driver door wide open, hazards flashing. But looking inside, the car's not empty. Krista's 14-month-old baby girl in the back seat, left alone, still strapped in a toddler car seat. Mommy is gone gone without a trace. Police convinced tonight mommy is forced out of the car and forced to leave her baby behind. We are taking your calls live. Let's go straight out to the scene. Eric Isley joining us from the Conway Daily Sun there in New Hampshire. Eric, what do we know? Uh, at this point, we know that the, uh, the police have impounded two vehicles. Um, they're searching some vehicles. They are looking for leads, but uh, they don't know much. They haven't released a whole lot of information. Out to Joe Gomez, reporter with News Radio KTRH. The ski resort where her car was found abandoned. Take a look at Krista Dittmeyer. It was about 60 miles east of her home, but it's my understanding, Joe Gomez, that she was on the phone with her mom and dad or her mom just the evening before. That's right, Nancy. She was uh, speaking on the phone, presumably with her mother the evening before. Everything was okay. Her mother said that Krista didn't seem uh, distraught or anything like that. The very next day, early Saturday morning, police find her abandoned vehicle with the flashers on in the parking lot of the ski resort. They thought it was abandoned anyways, but when they peered into the car, they found her 14-month-old beautiful baby girl strapped to a car seat in the back and mommy is nowhere to be found. Right now, police are investigating this as a criminal act they haven't labeled it as a kidnapping yet, Nancy, but Krista's family thinks that's what happened. And her sister believes that Krista must have made some sort of deal with her abductor to take her and leave her baby. Leave her baby alone, Nancy. Joining me right now is the special guest, Lieutenant Chris Pearlie, joining us from the local police department there in Conway, New Hampshire. Lieutenant, thank you for being with us. A lot of questions. Yes, uh, From everything that the family and friends say, this mother would never have left her baby behind. So why has it not been labeled foul play? Well, first of all, uh, I want to emphasize that the Conway Police Department, during the course of this investigation, in cooperation with the New Hampshire State Police, have not c mentioned or commented that force was used to take her from the scene. And I emphasized in a press, re uh, press uh, conference earlier that we are still looking into whether she was there or just the vehicle was there. Oh, so I want to clarify, I a, point, I I wanna clarify a point that's been attributed to me is we have not said, nor are we confirming, that force was used against her. We are looking into all aspects of the case. We have not labeled it a specific crime because to do that, we would have to have evidence that points to a specific act. But we are clear and have been clear since uh, about an hour or so afterwards that we are investigating this as a crime because nothing suggests that Krista Dittmeyer would have voluntarily absented herself from the vehicle or her child. You know, Lieutenant, you've just cleared up a lot of questions I had in my mind. With me is Lieutenant Chris Purley from the Conway Police Department. Everyone, take a look at this baby girl missing now, her 20-year-old single mom hard-working waitress taking care of her baby friends and family insist she would have never left her baby alone in this car it was 60 miles away from their home parked at an upscale ski resort parking lot back to lieutenant chris Purley. lieutenant uh, i i know it's a ski resort i know there's an exercise uh, a gym of some sort close by was there any surveillance video at all lieutenant I can't comment on the specific aspects of the investigation, and I, I know I, I say that probably painfully way too many times for the press, but to comment on any specific element of the investigation could impede the veracity of witnesses that come forward and the integrity of the investigation. So I don't want to comment on that specifically. I can tell you that at the time that the vehicle was found, the ski mountain had closed for the season. There is only one other commercial property in the area, and that is the fitness center, which was not open yet for business. Uh, and it is somewhat of a remote area, but I wouldn't say it's remote in the sense that it's mm -hmm. far, far away from residential or commercial property. But it is quiet there at this time of year. Lieutenant Purley, I understand the car was still running. 
That's correct. Uh, at 6.30 in the morning, a passerby saw the flashes on on the vehicle, uh, pulled in, uh, presumably just to check on the occupancy if they needed some help, approached and found the vehicle running, uh, the lights on, the hazard lights on, uh, a, a, an infant child in the back seat, and no adult either in the vehicle or in the immediate vicinity where she could see. Okay. And, that, and that motivated the caller to call. Let me ask you a couple more questions. So the engine's running, the flashers are on, the door is open. Is the dome light still on in the car? Well, the dome light's still on because the door is open. Uh, right. So, I understand yeah, that. that. I was thinking, Lieutenant, about how long the battery would have allowed the dome light to stay on. And we have called car specialists who have told us that with the engine running, uh, even with the engine running, it would only stay on for about four hours, um, even if it had started off with the engine running. So. What, another thing that's confusing me, Lieutenant Pearlie, is I know she spoke to her mom uh, or her parents the night before, presumably from inside of her home, but for the car to be abandoned at 6.30 in the morning, she would have had to leave it, be forced out of the home or have left the home during the night or, or super early the next morning. Well, the, the timeline is very important, and uh, again, it, it's a component of the investigation that is material to when the vehicle was there uh, and helps us to establish if witnesses come forward whether or not they could have actually seen uh, something that they're going to represent. So I can't speak specifically about when the car, or if we've pinned down the time when the car arrived there. However, is it true, Lieutenant, that she did speak to her mother the night before? Th that is the report from her mother that she spoke to her. From around 1030. Well, and when you say the night before, it's not a day before. We're talking about the evening of the twenty-third, uh, the evening of the twenty-second into the morning of the twenty-third. So, uh, can I ask you something? Was it about ten thirty p.m.? That's what I'm trying to find out. Yes, that's correct. On Friday. Ten thirty p.m. Friday evening, she talks to her mother on the phone. Do we know that she was inside of her house? Uh, I don't know that. She's represented that. That's where she said she was. Uh, so she was calling from her cell phone. Yes. And has it been pinged? Well, we, we, are, we have uh, executed a search warrant on her phone, and we have received records from the phone carrier, and we are uh, forensically analyzing those records. Okay, so I think that means you're trying to get the ping right now. Yes, we're actively investigating the, uh, the, both okay. the phone calls that uh, she and received, made, and where the locations were. Lieutenant, did she have a landline in the home? I have no idea. Well, I find that very unusual. Of course, I guess people do. It. You use your cell phone in the home when you've got a landline. Uh, everyone, we are talking about this 20-year-old single mom, a waitress, her car found abandoned, still running, the flashers on at an upscale ski resort. But upon closer inspection, police find the car is not empty. Her toddler girl left behind, strapped inside in the toddler seat. Family and friends say no way would she leave her baby behind. Was Krista Dittmeyer forced out of her car and forced to leave her baby behind? It doesn't feel real. It, it feels like a movie, almost like it's... I don't know. I just am like waiting for her to show up. Missing endangered person. Her Nissan Sentra found in the parking lot of a ski resort left running. And her infant daughter was sitting in the back seat. 